Hello, honey dips. Thanks for seeing me and joining me this morning. I am in Dallas, Texas and enjoying this so-called warm weather. It's a little cold today, but it is grind time for me. And I wanna introduce you to some of the new soaps that I'm making. The soap book that I am going to be using to inspire me to make some of the soaps that I would like to present is from a book that a good friend of mine had gave me that indulges in natural products. And the soap book that I am using is one of the very first people that taught me how to make soap. And her name is Anne Marie, and she is from Brambleberry. Um, she does cold process, I do hot, which means cold process takes about four to six weeks to cure all of the lye out. Uh, it's about 99% sure a positive once you do a pH balance test, but I use hot process, so I cook it out 110%, which makes the soaps soothing for the skin, mild, and easy to use right away. So the book that I have is Pure Soap Making. And this book right here, it basically tells you how to make soap cold process from the beginning to the end. However, when I use hot process, I use the same ingredients, but I cook all the lye out. And you generally can use it within 24 to 48 hours. It's always good for it to sit so they can get harder because the harder the bars are, the longer they last, the milder they are for the skin. And it's so much easier to use. So some of the ingredients that I use for coloring are generally mineral-based powders and clays. Sometimes I might add a little mica in there to brighten it up like a mica, a, a skin safe mica like orange or blue with indigo or orange mica with orange light clay. The, the clays, what they do is they put minerals into your skin when it's missing, but it also enhances the fragrances. Clays always makes such good bars of soap so that they can last a long time. Um, I'm gonna let you know some of the things that I use. Fresh alkanet, which is a root. The fresh alkanet is purple. Sometimes I use it in lavender. It can come out brown if you don't use it in the right way. But um, fresh alkanet is a little bit more dingier. Five month alkanet is more purple. And that's the one that I like to use. Um, I also have spirulina. Spirulina is green. I use that inside my tea tree oil soaps. It's the sea algae that actually puts the sea minerals back into your skin. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Fresh yarrow and annatto, which are great for skin infections or any kind of sebaceous pores. Uh, paprika is just good for color. Rose clay is good for hydration and, and exfoliation. That's a pink. Um, <clears throat> indigo is more of a blue. Sometimes a five month indigo can be a purple. Oh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, I was I also use pumpkin powder in my Canandula soaps. It's an orange and turmeric. Turmeric is an Ayurvedic herb. Ashwagandha is good for antiseptic. Bacopa is a very nice powder for antiseptic as well. I used to use it in my hair for psoriasis, for people with psoriasis, so that it can get that um, exfoliation going on without damaging the scalp and also inspiring stimulation so that it can grow, which is why I use it. So these are the palettes of the soaps colors that I have and some of the, some of the colors that you can see are definitely the colors that I use in my soaps, which is why I like to use them. They're pretty and they're natural. So I'm gonna go through some of the soaps that I'm gonna make today. Let's see, we hope. The first one is Nettle and Yarrow, and it's made with an apricot kernel, um, olive oil, rice bran, shea butter, um, and beeswax and coconut oil. And some of the additives that I use are the nettle, of course, the ground nettle, and the yarrow, and apricot kernel oil, which is very good nurturing um, nutrients to the skin 
and it helps with drying, exfoliation, and it also is great for um, bringing the radiance out in the skin. And this is the soap. Of course, all molds are different, but depending on which mold that I use and how I'm gonna do it, I always put my own spin on it. A lot of times I, act, I use a lot of honey. Now, as far as my oat milk and honey soap, this is my oat milk and honey soap. Now, my soaps are about six to eight ounces. They're pretty big, and generally about 12 bucks or three for 30. Um, the smaller ones that I used to sell, like, I'm gonna give you an example, like my Paradise, compared to the oat milk and honey. So you see how you get more. These were 10 or three for 25, but the bigger bars definitely last a, long, a lot longer so that you can get more bang for your buck. Because although these soaps are very good quality, they're expensive, but they're worth it. You invest in your skin, you will see dramatic results right away and you won't go back to anything else. So the next soap that I'm gonna use, as opposed to the oat milk and honey, I always have that one. But one that I think is so pretty and so ornamental is the buttermilk honeycomb. And I've done this one before. It takes a lot of effort, but it has, um, it's made with the honeycombs inside of it. And it has a trifecta of goodness inside of it. The buttermilk is used for skin treatment and it helps with lactic acid. Uh, it also can reduce the pores so that it can tighten the skin up. Honey and silk, it combines to make silky smooth lathers. So you, all my bars, you're gonna, feel, you're gonna see those nice dense lathers that I really love. And it help keep your skin glowing because the honey is a nice humectant without adding too much oil to your face and giving it that nice smooth sheen that you love to see without makeup. Um, we're gonna put the molds inside the freezer with that one, but it smells so good because I still use the oat milk and honey fragrance and a little French lavender inside of it, which accentuates it. Um, the yellow that's inside of it is generally the shea butter inside of this. I think this one has Tussa silk fibers in it too that I'm using. I sometimes use corn silk because some people are vegan and Tussa comes from the silkworm. And um, I have corn out there, but I also have Tussa inside the lab and the Tussa Silk is so smooth. Oh, it's so nice and smooth. It's a little expensive, but it's, it's worth it. All right, so the next one that I'm gonna do, of course, I did this one last year and the year before, is my Gardener Soap. Now, the Gardener Soap that I make, it doesn't look like this with the squares because I don't have the molds. And because of the amount of soaps that I make, I don't have the time. So I usually do it in top layers instead of square layers like the pitcher, but it's the perfect soap for cleaning up after work outside in the garden. It's super scrubby. It gets the dirt off your fingers and your fingernails while leaving behind a fresh herbaceous scent. It's, mm, it's just so many herbs in there. You got the rosemary, the lemon, the orange, you got the coffee, the um, the honey inside of that, but it's just a little bit more exfoliation and some um, large grounds of coffee and parts of it and then some smaller ground, grounds for gentle or milder exfoliation. And so I'm gonna do those in the square, of course. The next one is one that by request, <laughs> they asked me to do a coffee swirl and the coffee is got caffeine in it, but it also provides your joints. Um, it just gives your, not your joints, your skin, this big jolt of caffeine energy and it just makes it nice and tight. It's anti-cellulite um, inside of the scrub. So when you scrub it on like the cellulite areas, you'll start to see a different um, feel to your skin, to your legs, your face. Um, 